Huh? Hello, Loretta. I wish I could see you, um, but welcome. This is the second uh, Facebook Live uh, art talk that I'm doing. I have a cameraman tonight um, who is behind the camera. It's Stu. And uh, so this uh, is the back workspace, the studio space at my gallery, Tim J. Leary Studios. So I'm really glad um, that you're tuning in. Um, so Stu is going to tell me what he sees there. Um, <laughs> yeah, your finger showed up. Okay. Uh, so uh, I wanted to talk about drawing this month. I felt that um, it was a good thing to um, good thing to uh, go back to the basics and to the beginnings. Drawing is a very basic thing. Um, it's something that all artists do. I can remember one time I um, wanted to have a um, I wanted to take private oil painting lessons, and the first question that the teacher asked was, "Can you draw?" And you know, fortunately, I was able to say yes. Of course, I sometimes doubt about how well, but I've come to the conclusion that um, that's very subjective. And uh, so my camera's moving around. I see. So, um, but it's also you know, so it's also like the instinctual thing that kids do by making marks when they're toddlers on the walls or wherever they get the chance to do it. It's also the first evidence of art making is uh, our drawings that were found in caves, you know, 30,000 years from 30,000 years ago. Um, even um, in the pyramids, there were beautiful drawings, even though they were also painted. Um, the basis of them is drawing. Uh, so drawing, drawing is very cool and uh, important to me. Um, it is how I begin. Whenever I feel stuck, I go back. Or if I'm starting something new, um, I go into my sketch pads and I scribble things out. And uh, it's a way, it's, it's, a, it's a right brain way of thinking, uh, I think. So, um, so I like that. So here we are. Um, where we can't have our wonderful art walk that I, I love every month, um, but we can be together like this. So what we typically do is have something to drink. So tonight um, I have a Quarantini and, uh, that I brought with me. So tonight's Quarantini is vodka, uh, hold the bleach, and there's not a whole lot of it, but there we go. It'll be enough to make me happy. There we go. And for anybody who knows, um, it's Hangar One Vodka from Alameda. Um, and I think I even bought it there. So uh, cheers and welcome to whoever is watching right now. Got P All right. P oh, and good. Steve. Peter and Steve. Okay. Dale. Peter and Steve and Pia. And Dale. Um, Dale. Dale. All right, great. Patty Bialik. Cool. Oh, hi, Patty. Uh, so, so what I've done here is I've, I've prepared for tonight by bringing out some of my drawings. Um, maybe we can just do a quick scan of that wall. I'll go through all of this stuff. I know that if you uh, were here last month or if you came to the January Art Walk that you would have seen some of this work. Um, which I continue to bring back because it illustrates my point about drawing. Um, and for me, uh, sometimes uh, the, the drawing is how I develop the ideas or refine them. So um, what I've done is I've got a bunch of books and uh, I want to give you some examples from these books. I picked out a couple of things. Um, I have this wonderful book that um, was weeded out of the FIDM library years ago, and I was able to get my hands on it, Rembrandt Drawings by Rembrandt and his pupils. So it, it does side-by-side um, -side drawings. On this side, you have Rembrandt's work, and this is his student's work, 
Um, I can't see who the student is, and to be honest, I don't know who all of these um, artists are. But it's interesting to see um, how this work is developed and what the differences are is what's interesting to me. Rembrandt had a way of really evoking an emotion with his drawings, um, but some of the other artists, their work is more refined looking. So that brings up a good question for me. Um, I'm holding this postcard out um, because my bookmarks tonight are postcards that I've collected over the years. Um, art that I... What did um, I do? Stu, what are you doing? Art that I have seen in museums. And what? What? I turned it around so it was facing oh. me. All I don't right. know how to get it back. All right, hold on. Oh, that. Okay. Okay, here we go. Technical difficulties. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, so I've saved these mm -hmm. postcards and I buy these postcards. So now when I go to a museum, I look for postcards to buy something that I saw that particular day. Um, I had a period of time where I, um, well, still interested in uh, Japanese woodblock prints. And so I have a few of those. So you'll see some of these and I'll show them to you as we go. Um, so I have a whole collection of them by now. So. Um, we have this, let me turn the page here. Uh, I can tell you about this postcard. Um, we just got this last summer in Munich at a, an amazing museum which had a bunch of uh, Paul Clay's work, and I love Paul Clay. Um, I like these, I selected these because you have two that are pretty similar portraits. Um, and again, I'm looking at it upside down so I can't really tell you too much, except that Rembrandt's on this side and the student is on that side. And, um, but here, um, so, so it makes me wonder if Rembrandt's are not as detailed as the students, if he wasn't uh, doing that to um, leave room for, uh, for thought, right? Leave room for thinking and uh, on the viewer's part. So the viewer could fill in uh, the spaces. I, um, I used to tell my students that, you know, we'd look at a drawing and say, oh, it's a bunny rabbit, it's a tree. And in reality, in my existential moments, it's not none of that. It is actually, uh, they're marks on a paper. They're simply marks on a paper. And um, so in this case, uh, I suspect that they're ink marks. And, um, but they're, you know, the lines, portray something, they look like something, but they're not it, of course. So let's flip the page again. Another one I selected. This one's quite different because we have what looks more like a crayon uh, drawing or a pencil drawing on the Rembrandt side and something a little different on the other side. Um, I don't know what this lovely postcard is, um, but I love it, so I kept it. Uh, so that's that's a little bit of Rembrandt and drawing. Okay, um, let's move on. So, um, and I'll set this aside. I have a couple. I found a page in a How to Draw a book of uh, Leonardo da Vinci's drawings. Um, we all know the Vitruvian Man um, and some of his other drawings. I'm reading a book about him, and uh, his sketches and his notebooks are really quite fascinating. And they're filled with all sorts of things that are not necessarily drawings, but sometimes ideas. Um, so let's move on. Um, I have this book, which I've shown a couple of times. That's a favorite of mine. Um, so the, the, uh, the thing about this book is, oh my god, Ellsworth Kelly, who's known for painting one color on a canvas, did drawings. Well, of course he did. He was an artist. All artists are doing something like that over time. And so, um, Richard Diebenkorn. Uh, so, if you can see this long drawing, his lines are very simple and very elegant. He has a way of, uh, you know, capturing uh, the, the essence of a, of a plant with only a few lines. Um, there are a few more in here, so let me see if there's anything. I like this one too, I think it's very nice. Um, Georgia O'Keeffe. 
Um, anyway, this is a very nice one, and this, as you may be ha uh, have noticed, I'm highly influenced by what he did and what he does. Um, so I want to show a couple of these things. So uh, these were on display here in January, and uh, I showed them last month Some uh, when I was at a residency, and I picked up a bunch of leaves off the ground after windy rainstorm, and I brought them back to my uh, studio, and I actually laid them out on the table and did draw a drawing of all the different leaves I managed to get back to the studio that were not completely destroyed uh, in my hands. So each one in colored pencil, um, perhaps a little water, uh, watercolor pencil, I'm not sure anymore, and a few uh, dark marks, uh, which may have been from ink. Um, but from those, um, I've laid out a couple that are from, so here's this one, is the, uh, one of the photos I took. There's the first drawing I made of it, very simple, um, following the Ellsworth Kelly example and then taking that drawing, um, here it is, um, still drawn, I think, but on canvas. Uh, so you have the same thing here. This was the first iteration. Now, can I find it on this page? Let's see. Can I find that one on this page? Uh, by the way, I'm sure it's here, but uh, I'm gonna guess that it might be at pointy end it could be this, this yellow one on the bottom, I would say, perhaps. Um, these were also done, I took a photograph of them that day so I remember the colors because by the next day they were turning brown. Um, and then I have here, without a drawing in between, um, a photograph of these, these two leaves which ended up on this canvas. I'm sure there's a drawing of that somewhere. I have all of those. Um, I've kept all of those over the years. Um, of these series, actually, the first one that became a painting was this one here. Um, for some reason, even though my shadow is off on the side, um, I've always liked the way that stands up by itself. Um, there. All right. Um, uh, if I was in a classroom, I would ask if there were any questions. If you have a comment or a question, you can send it. Uh, of course, on Facebook Live. Um, ah, here's a postcard. David Bowie, a great exhibit in Chicago. Um, and simple, simple, that's what Ellsworth Kelly did. Simple, simple, simple. And another one here, um, a really nice vine of leaves. And I don't know if Teresa is watching, Teresa Lehane sent me a, a little watercolor on a postcard from Europe one time, and here it is. And I keep that with all of my inspirational cards. Um, okay, I wanted to show some stuff that's ha that has happened in the sketchbook. Um, I'm gonna start Oh, I've, I've marked a bunch of pages here. Um, the Pergamon Museum in Berlin, uh, where they have a wall from ba Babylon. Um, so there were, the calla lilies were in bloom, and we got some calla lilies one day, and I did a drawing, and I couldn't help but color it, um, and then followed through with that into a watercolor um, that's here on the wall, and that is, um, uh, well, that is just, it's a drawing still because it's pencils, watercolor pencils is what I used uh, to make that one. So uh, let's see if there's anything else. And uh, that's a fun one too.